Games have buttons, doors, chests, and a myriad of other elements you interact with and that you expect to respond in a specific way. To do what you need them to do, these elements need to report events to the game to trigger the action you expect them to trigger. We call that a signal. In this video, we'll check out two different ways to connect signals in the engine. Using code, we connect the signal emitted by a button when it's pressed to hide and unhide a character. Then, using the editor, we connect the signal emitted by a 3D door to open when you walk up to it and close when you walk away from it. This video is sponsored by our Godot courses. Our Godot 4 courses are launching in early access starting January 30, 2024. You will be able to access them directly on GD School, our brand new learning platform. And for a limited time, you can pre-order them at up to $75 below launch price. If you're still learning how to code, remember to save this video for later. You can learn GScript faster with our free app. It's up to date for Godot 4 and is the best starting point for a game dev learning pathway. In games, as in pretty much any computer program, you often need a change to one entity, such as clicking a button, to affect another entity, such as hiding the character here. So I've made just that in this little example. If I click the hide button, it hides the character and it changes the text. And then I can click it again to show the character back. To do that in Godot, you can use a built-in feature called Signals. If I click my button to select it and go to the node dock in the top right of the interface, you can see a long list of signals. These are messages that get emitted automatically when something happens to the button, such as clicking it. You can connect the signals to some script file in your scene and react to the signal using a function. So if I click the script at the top of my scene, you will see, well, some code that I'm going to hide, and I'm going to show you how to connect the signal via code. And then we'll see how to connect the signal using the editor. So first, to connect the signal, I need to access the, the node that has the signal. So in this case, it's the button. I want to know when the button was clicked. So I can click and drag my button onto my script file, you can see that it has a little person sign and you can see the same signs in the uh, scene doc. You can activate that by right clicking a node and going to access as unique name. You can find a video dedicated to that in this series. Uh, but this just makes it easy to access the node. So I get a reference to my button like this and then I'm going to write a dot to access the properties of the button and its signals and I type the name of the signal. In this case, it's pressed. When you click a button, it gets pressed and the pressed signal gets emitted. And then I add another dot to access the functions of the signal and I write connect to connect that signal to something. The connect function expects you to connect to another function, a function that will get called when the button is pressed, allowing you to run any code you want. And we've seen in the previous video that Godot 4 has lambda functions, anonymous functions. So we can use that when connecting signals. So I type inside of the parentheses func, and then parentheses, colon, and from the next line, I can write the instructions in my function. And so I'm going to get the character, I can drag and drop it, or I could type, you know, a percent character like this, dot visible is equal to false. This is going to make the character invisible upon clicking the button. So if I now press F6 to run my scene and click the button, it hides the character and it doesn't do anything else. Uh, in this example, if I uncomment my previous code and expand it, I had something slightly more complex. I've decided to name my function, my anonymous function, but it's completely optional as we've seen in the previous video, so I can remove the name. And then I have two lines. If um, my character is visible, I make it invisible and vice versa by using the not keyword. I um, flip or reverse the visibility of my character with that. And then I set my button text to hide if the character is visible, else I set it to show. And this is how when I click the button, text changes.
In this second example, we're going to see how to connect signals using the editor, which is also possible. And we're seeing this in 3D because you'll see that signals work just the same in 3D. So in this demo, I have a door and when I walk to it, it opens. And when I walk away, it closes automatically. This is achieved using an area 3D node and it's on body entered, uh, body entered and body exited signals. If I click the movie slate icon on the left uh, next to my door 3D node, it's going to open this door scene in the editor. So this is where I can edit my door individually. And if we look in the scene dock in the top left, you'll see a little icon indicating signal connections. Uh, you can click it to show the node dock if it isn't already highlighted. And there, we not only see these red icons listing all the available signals on my door, we also see two green icons indicating established connections. If I double click either of these, it's going to take me to my script where you can see that we have two functions and uh, calling an animation player to play an animation. So to show you how to uh, establish those connections using the editor, I'm going to delete one of the two functions. And then in the node doc, I'm going to select the uh, body exited connection and click the disconnect button in the bottom right of the editor. Now, if I go back to my level scene and I run the game, you will see that the door opens when I run to it, but when I move away, it does not close back. And so the signal has been successfully disconnected. So going back to my door scene, I can double click the body exited signal to connect it to my door. Uh, note that the body entered and exited signals respectively detect when something like playable character enters within the area uh, defined by the blue block uh, here in my scene and when the character exits the area. So I'm going to double click the signal and then a pop-up appears and lets me select a node from my scene to which I want to connect the signal. It can be any node that has a script attached to it. And at the bottom, it asks me which function you want to connect this signal to. So uh, by default, Guto will generate a name using uh, this template uh, on, you know, name of the signal or name of the node, name of the signal. If I click connect, Guto will create the function for me and add a little icon in the margin to indicate the signal connection. Then I can replace the body of the function uh, with the code I want to run. So in this case, I want to play the close animation of my door. So I can use my animation player here. I'm going to call dot play. It's a function that animation players offer and play the close animation, which could automatically completes for me. And with that, I can play the scene again. And when I move to the door, it opens. And when I move away, it closes. Remember, for a limited time only, you can pre-order your Godo 4 courses below their launch price on GDQuest.com. With the great Godo 4 starter kit, this means you save $75. This bundle includes our foundational courses, Learn 2D and 3D Game Dev from Zero with Godo 4, and our interactive cookbook of popular game mechanics, Node Essentials, Godo 4 Edition. 